The series view is a list of available image studies on the left side of your viewer screen. Each series is represented by an icon indicating a different state. A red dog ear indicates an unapproved series. A plain background indicates a saved series that has yet to be stored. A black background with a gold drum indicates a series that has been permanently stored to the DICOM server, and a gray background indicates a series that can be retrieved from the storage server. Once a patient record is open and ready to capture images, you must first select a blank template. Select a template from the drop-down menu and click the Show Template button. A plug-in is a MyPass component that allows you to interface with an image capture device. In this example, we activate a Planmeca brand intraoral sensor to capture an image by clicking the blue I.O. button on the toolbar. Here are examples of our plugins that support various brands of devices. Once a series is ready to be approved and stored at the DICOM server, click the Save button. Enter in a custom description if you'd like, the referring physician, and click OK. If a user with limited permissions is trying to approve the images, a prompt will appear requesting a user with approval rights to sign off on the series. Additional images captured to a template with limited space will begin appearing at the bottom of the template view in an overflow area. It is possible to left-click and drag images from the overflow to a spot in the template. In the event a different template is required after images have been taken and they are still unapproved, simply select a new template from the drop-down menu and select Remount Current Series. Then, left-click and drag the images into their appropriate spots in the new template. Some of the periapical templates have no anatomical information defined. When saving a PA, an informational dialog will appear indicating that anatomical information be selected in the Properties pane of the viewer. Selecting a predefined description from the drop-down menu will set the required anatomical information, allowing the series to be saved. This next section will cover the various image enhancement tools. To rotate an image 90 degrees, left click the image to select it. You'll notice the border of the image turns red to indicate it's been selected. Click the rotate button on the toolbar to rotate the image.
To adjust the brightness and contrast of an approved image, click on the toolbar icon that looks like a black and white sun. One method to adjust the brightness and contrast is to click and drag around the red dot within the brightness and contrast dialog. Alternatively, you can simply left click and drag across the image itself. To swap the black and white image data, click the Invert Image button on the toolbar. The Stretch Histogram feature can also be used to adjust brightness and contrast with a bit more control of the image data. Click the Stretch Histogram button and manipulate the edges of the red box in the Histogram dialog to alter the range of blacks and whites in the image. The Optimize Brightness tool changes the brightness setting to be optimal for a selected area of the image. With this button selected, left-click and drag out a circular selection of a particular area of interest and let go. The Equalization tool is to assist with diagnosis. To use this tool, click on the Equalization button. Then, move the mouse over an image and a circular selection will be affected as you move the mouse. Click the Colorize button to convert the black and white image to color. This may aid in diagnosis. The Noise Reduction tool is used to clean up an image that is grainy or noisy. To use this tool, select an image and click the Noise Reduction button. The Edge Enhancement tool reduces the blurry edges to crisp, sharp edges. To use this tool, click on an image and then click the arrow besides the Edge Enhancement button to select the amount of sharpness. This effect is cumulative, so caution is suggested. It can be used excessively and ruin the diagnostic quality of an image. If you want to reverse a change you made to an image, you can press the Undo button. If you decide you want to keep the change that was undone, press the Redo button. To reverse all changes made to an image, press the Undo All button. The latest version of the MyPax Viewer offers some more advanced image filters to aid in diagnosis. They are the Periodontal, Endodontic, and Dent into Enamel filters. This animation demonstrates all three. With the Magnifier button selected, left-click and drag across an image to magnify the selection.
With the zoom button depressed, there are two ways to zoom into an image. You can left click and drag out a selection to zoom into that area of interest. You can also just left click anywhere on the image to zoom into that spot. The viewer can be calibrated for approximate measurements. The ruler tool can be used to left click and draw a line measurement across the image. The multi-line ruler works in much the same way, but each time the mouse is clicked while dragging, an extra point is added so that the perimeter of a selection can be measured. The protractor tool allows you to measure an angle. Left click and drag outwards to create the angle measurement. Various informational overlays or annotations can be applied to an image. These can be in the form of lines and pointers indicating an area of interest and also text-based descriptions. Annotations are not embedded in the actual image and can be toggled on and off by clicking the annotation button on the toolbar or clicking the red icon in the upper right corner of the image. Once an image has been stored to the DICOM server, it can no longer be permanently altered. However, you can still modify the image for viewing purposes. If you want to save the changes, you can still do that but the series will be saved as an additional, derived series. There are a couple different ways to compare images in the MyPax viewer. The first is the presentation overview mode. Right click on an image and select copy to add it to the Windows clipboard. Repeat this process for as many images as you'd like to compare simultaneously from as many series as you'd like. Click the presentation overview button to display all copied images on screen at once. Alternatively, you can compare more than one series at once. Simply hold down the control key while left clicking multiple series in the series view, right click the selection, and select compare to display the series in a local view. It is possible to export images from the MyPax viewer to a CD. Select a series of images or an individual image and select export images from the image menu. Under source, select what you will be exporting. Under Destination, select your CD drive. Make sure that DICOM is a selected file format and select the Create DICOM DIR file option to include a light version of the MyPax viewer with the images. Click OK to launch the Windows CD Burning Wizard.
Images can be imported into the viewer as well. Since DICOM images already contain patient information, it is not necessary to first open the correct patient record. MyPacks will create a new record or merge into the existing patient record automatically. From the image menu, select Import Images. Browse to the location of the images under hard drive or a CD. Select the files and click Open. Click OK on the following dialog and the images will automatically appear as a new series. Non-DICOM images can be imported as well. However, you must first open the correct patient record and also select a new template to import the images into. You still select Import Images from the Image menu and browse to and select your image files as you would with DICOM images. MyPacks can also print images. Select a series or individual image and click the printer button. Much like exporting images, you must select an option under Source to determine what exactly you will be printing. Be sure to select Current Series Layout to print out the images as they appear in the template view. Otherwise, each image will be printed on one whole page, potentially wasting ink.